Welcome back to my channel, you guys. The Keto Saga. I'm Ashley. I am the owner of this group, this page, this video library plethora, wherever you seem to be watching this video. Um, let's talk a little bit about weight stalls, specifically when you're on a ketogenic diet. A lot of my members, a lot of my clients, uh, they come up and they're like, hey, you know, I stepped on the scale today and I actually, it hasn't moved at all. You know, in a couple of days, I'm not losing weight. Do I need to fast to get into ketosis? Do, and they start freaking out. And so I really wanted to clarify a couple of things. First of all, if you are doing everything right, weight loss is going to happen, period. So instead of kind of thinking that you're doing everything right and you're still not losing weight, let's look at the things that you could possibly be missing, okay? So there should be some kind of progress every single week. And if there's not, that's when you kind of wanna figure it out, there's something off. A lot of people wanna claim that you know they're tracking their macros or they're only eating 1300 calories or they are, <laughs> I have a dog smelling me right now. Um, or they are, you know, reading all the ingredients or something, I don't know. But they end up not realizing that they are overestimating, underestimating, overcalculating, not calculating enough, uh, not doing what they need to do. So let's talk a little bit about that. Number one, there isn't as great of a deficit as you think. So the whole calories in versus calories out thing, that still applies here. On keto, we do look at macros more than we do calories, but they still matter. You still want a caloric deficit. Um, and, and there's a lot more that goes into it, so I'm not gonna get too technical with you guys, but um, you need to have that deficit. And if you're not at a deficit, or you think you are, but you're not, that's gonna cause a weight stall. So double check that. Uh, there's hidden carbs or sugars that you're not realizing that's a big one a lot of people don't realize that hey you know you're eating ranch or you're eating balsamic vinegar or you're sprinkling on cheese or some there's hidden carbs or sugar somewhere in your diet that you are just missing or you're not calculating you are there's something that you aren't counting so for instance when i do my omads I don't count leafy greens. I count broccoli, cauliflower, green beans, those type of things. I do not count the leafy greens. So in someone whose weight has stalled, they might wanna go back to counting something that they're not. So like leafy greens, or maybe they're not counting all of the you know sprinklings of cheese that they're putting on something. Even the little things add up and you would be very surprised if you took a look at exactly what you're putting in your mouth, exactly what's going into your system, you might be surprised at, at the things that you're missing. Some of the ingredients in the food that you're using are not keto friendly. A lot of people think that, especially new members too, a lot of people think that just because something is low carb or low sugar, it, it automatically means it's keto. And that's actually not the case. I wish it was because it would make our lives so much easier. But unfortunately, there are certain ingredients that you guys need to stay away from when you're on keto. And the main reason is that the difference between keto and low carb is that we're trying to heal our bodies from the inflammation caused by these nasty additives and chemicals that they put in our food. So that's why there's a lot of whole foods and a lot of um, cooking from whole ingredients, natural ingredients, not so much the packaged stuff. A lot of people are like, hey, I found a cauliflower pizza crust in the, you know, in the freezer section at my grocery store. They get it home and it's six, only six net carbs, but that's for like fourth a pizza. Or the, um, they use modified, you know, cornstarch or they use soybean oil or they, use, there's a lot of different things in the ingredients that are not keto friendly that could also be causing a stall. Another thing is your glycogen levels. So the way that keto works is that you have to burn through the what's called glycogen before you reach fat burning. So when you eat carbs, it turns into glucose and it gets stored as glycogen if it doesn't get used. So you can have gl um, glycogen stored in your liver or in your muscles. 
in order to reach fat burning, those glycogen stores need to be used or consumed, I guess, as energy um, before you can get there. So if you are eating and then not giving your body a chance to go through those glycogen stores, that can also cause a weight gain because it's just like you're emptying your tank and then you're filling it right back up. You're emptying your tank and then you're filling it right back up. So um, maybe try intermittent fasting with that and it might help release some of that glycogen um, and keep it lower at a lower level so that you can actually reach the fat burning stage. One other thing that a lot of people don't realize is after every 10 pounds lost, I like to recommend that people recalculate their macros. When you're losing weight, your maintenance caloric intake needs to be different because you need less. So um, even, even Dr. Berg was talking about this too, is that somebody who's doing OMAD, so one meal a day versus someone who's eating three times a day, their caloric intake is going to be different. Their needs are going to be different. So you might just want to try readjusting your macros and see if that helps because your caloric intake might not have to be as great as what you think it is. So you might actually be taking in more than what's needed. The last thing is too much sodium. This one is a personal one for me because I do have my keto raid, which I've posted the recipe on my Instagram. You guys can check out if you haven't already, the keto saga, everything to do with me and my groups and my Facebook and my progress, everything, it's all the keto saga. So anything you wanna look up, that's gonna be, that's where you can find me. Um, so too much sodium. This one is a huge one because on keto, we actually have to kind of supplement in a way with sodium so that it's, you know, it's one of our, our electrolytes we want to keep up on as well as potassium and magnesium. Um, so you're salting your foods, making sure that you're not low on electrolytes. But if you have too much sodium, that can cause water retention, which can make the scale stall. So when your sodium levels return to, to normal, that water weight will go back down. So that's something that you should just be aware of. It can also happen, one other thing too that I forgot to mention earlier was protein. It takes a while for this to happen, but it is always a possibility. If you're going too high on your protein, it can turn into um, glucose and, and you know, that, that's not something I really wanna go into because it takes a while for that to happen, but it is a possibility, so I'm just mentioning it here. So if you are a new member and you are starting keto and you find yourself on the stall, even if you're not a new member, but if you find yourself in a stall, here's a couple of things that you can do, okay? So know that there are so many variables day to day that can change your weight and day to day measurements should never be what you're basing your progress on. So, and by variables, I mean your weight can literally change 5.5 pounds every single day for many different reasons. So it's not something I want you guys to freak out about, not at all. Here's a couple of things that you can do, uh, hopefully that will help with a stall if you happen to be there, if you're worried about it. Always weigh at the same time of day. And really in the morning is best before there's been any liquid intake or anything after you've gone to the bathroom. I would weigh yourself, like get completely naked. Hello dog. Um, <laughs> get completely naked, step on that scale, that would be ideal. You can weigh either every day and take an average of like your weekly, your weekly weigh-ins uh, because day to day, in other words, means nothing. It doesn't really mean anything because it can change so much. You kind of want to look at the big picture here. So um, remember that six weeks is generally what they consider a stall. And in that case, you wanna go back through what I was just talking about and take a look at all of those different things. And I think I'm going to be creating a, probably a document that you guys can save to your phone or your tablet or computer. Um, I'm gonna be putting it up in my, my Keto Saga Begins group. So if you wanna get this, um, please become a member of our Keto Saga community. And uh, again, that's a Keto Saga Begins. I'll post a link down below and you guys can get the, the full on document that you that I just talked about so you guys can have it ready when you need it. The other thing too that I want to talk about was, so six weeks is a stall, 
but that also includes inches. Now, if you guys are not taking in inch measurements, what your measurements are, be sure to do that because your weight might not move on the scale, but your measurements might. Perfect example, I have been fasting for the last five days. Two days ago, I stepped on the scale and I had actually gained six ounces. So I took my measurements instead and I'm down three inches. So just overall, look at the bigger picture. As long as you're going, you know, you're not going up, then you're in a pretty good place. If it's six weeks and you're stalled for six weeks, guys, it's really important, six weeks. Um, then take a look at everything else that I talked about. So I hope this helped clarify just a little bit about weight loss stalls. You can try different things too, like intermittent fasting. That seems to help a lot of people. Adding um, yoga, depending on what body type you are. I know adrenal types like me, we need to stay away from heavy stress exercises. So you can do some yoga, you can do walking. HIIT exercise is actually the best for uh, keto because you do those high intensity interval trainings and then you rest and you have to get a lot of rest. That's also another thing too, stress. Stress on your body is going to either cause you to gain or stall. So relax, take it easy, get back to basics, keep it, you know, keep it strict, but keep it basic. If all else fails, just keep it basic. Salads, um, lots of veggies, lots of really good protein, you know, healthy, healthy fats, it'll come off, but you do have to be patient. I know you guys want the results and you're working hard for it. It's so discouraging to see the scale not move or go up or, you know, but it is what it is. You have to trust the process. All right, you guys, I hope that answered some questions. If you have any more, please post them in the comments below and check out my group, my beginning group, The Keto Saga Begins. Um, if you guys are looking for support or if you have questions or um, if you want that uh, data sheet. All right, I'll see you guys later.